In the hours after we eat, certain blood parameters change as the result of the digestion process. These include blood sugar, triglycerides, insulin, cholesterol, inflammation markers such as C-reactive protein, and many more. A small rise and fall of blood sugar, triglycerides and insulin in response to food intake is completely normal and healthy. Excessive spikes, especially meal after meal, alongside increases in cholesterol and inflammation markers, set us up for obesity and chronic degenerative diseases, including heart disease and type 2 diabetes. In this video, we will look at the glycemic load of different foods, which is known to affect blood sugars and insulin, but also triglycerides. Blood sugar spikes. A sharp increase in blood sugar will result in the release of excessive amounts of insulin. Insulin is a growth hormone with various tasks in our body. We want to keep it low and steady. A sharp decline in blood sugar will prompt our body to release triglycerides from our liver for energy, but we also want to keep triglycerides low. Blood sugar spikes are not the only cause of high insulin and triglyceride levels, but they play a major role. Animal protein also spikes insulin, and saturated and trans fats are major causes of high triglyceride levels. Spiking our blood sugar meal after meal should be avoided. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Blood sugar response. There are many factors that influence how different food items affect our blood sugar levels. These include the glycemic load of the meal as a whole, insulin resistance, insulin production, gut health and meal timing. Insulin resistance describes the inability of insulin to regulate blood sugar levels. Impaired insulin production is a factor in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Thus diabetics and non-diabetics with insulin resistance will experience higher blood sugar spikes in response to the same meal compared to healthy individuals. Watch our videos on insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes for more information. Isolated glycemic load. The glycemic load is a parameter describing how different food items affect the blood sugar levels of healthy individuals in a controlled setting. On a biochemical level, the glycemic load is affected by the carbohydrate content, fiber content, also its structural integrity, antioxidant content and preparation methods. A food high in readily available carbohydrates containing sugar or flour will generally have a high glycemic load. A smoothie has a higher glycemic load than the whole fruits because the structural integrity of the fiber is lost. Berries high in antioxidants have a low glycemic load and also help against the oxidative stress caused by our digestive processes. Boiled sweet potatoes have a lower glycemic load than baked sweet potatoes because of increased water content and increased bioavailability of antioxidants. In general, whole plant foods such as vegetables, whole fruits, intact grains, legumes and nuts and seeds are low in glycemic load. The more they are processed, the higher the glycemic load becomes. Whole meal glycemic load. The glycemic load of isolated food items is quite useful to know, but it has its limitations. It does not account for all the other factors that affect blood sugar levels and it does not account for meal composition. If you eat a slice of Wonder Bread, your blood sugar will likely spike from the readily available carbohydrates. But if you, for example, add an almond spread or berry jam, the blood sugar spike will actually be blunted. Low glycemic load plant foods and berries actually improve the glycemic load of the whole meal. But if you add butter or a slice of chicken breast, which have a low glycemic load themselves, you might also expect the blood sugar response to improve but it actually gets worse. Second meal effect. We have seen that low glycemic plant foods and berries actively improve the glycemic load of the whole meal. But low glycemic plant foods high in fiber can even affect the glycemic load of subsequent meals hours later. This is called the second meal effect. If you eat a dinner containing legumes, intake grains and or nuts and seeds, the effective glycemic load of your subsequent breakfast and lunch will be lower. These high fiber foods improve your gut health, which plays an important role in insulin resistance and your metabolism as a whole. Effect of meal timing. Our body's ability to handle carbohydrate energy declines throughout the day. 
A healthy individual will have a normal blood sugar response to a sugar water challenge in the morning, but test as pre-diabetic at night. And a pre-diabetic will test as pre-diabetic in the morning, but as a full-blown type 2 diabetic at night. Studies about front-loaded calories, so eating a large breakfast, a medium lunch and an early and small dinner, consistently show health benefits, including lower type 2 diabetes risk, lower triglycerides, lower cholesterol and an overall reduced mortality risk. So it's better to have your high glycemic meals for breakfast and go for an early and small low glycemic dinner. Glycemic load summary. Here is a quick summary. Choose whole plant foods, low in glycemic load. Foods with added sugar and all flour products are high in glycemic load and should be avoided. Low glycemic load plant foods and berries improve the blood sugar response of the meal they are added to. Legumes, intact grains and nuts and seeds improve the glycemic load of subsequent meals. Higher glycemic load meals should be eaten early. Dinner should be early, small and low in glycemic load. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. If you can't or don't want to follow all these suggestions, start with small changes, such as adding berries, legumes and nuts and seeds to your meals. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. See you next week!